Thank you very much, Your Excellency. And now I'm going to request His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, and Commander in Chief of the Kenyan Defense Forces, has to move forward and unveil the signage of the Kenyan Security Council. I request His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Burundi, to address. Here, the president is now going to officially cut the ribbon and to open that Kenya Shipment Limited. And the president has finally unveiled the Kenya Shipyard Limited in Kisumu with official opening and commissioning and cutting of the ribbon of the Kenya Shipyard Limited in Kisumu. Now, that is the official visioning and opening and unveiling of the Kenya Shipment Limited Yard in Kisumu with the President Uru Kenyatta, accompanied by Burundian President here in Kisumu. Now that marks the official opening and unveiling of that particular, that one. With the core values just to enter we just to give you the mission, the vision of that, uh, the leading catalyst of development in building industry in East Africa. And of course, it's not time for prayer. President of the Republic of Kenya, the Commander in Chief of the Kenyan Board of Trade, and the Lord, the Secretary, the Director of the Premier, President of the Republic of Kenya, with the Yarnbar. Then, the Professor Red Demon with the Yarnbar Minister, also with the Yarnbar, the Union with the Yarnbar for the National Future, the Badilo, the Secretary, improve the life of people of Kenya and improve the perspective. We have a big thing to ask our world for them. for the prayer and after the president has just finally unveiled the Kenya shipyards limited that is now the prayer session that currently happening at the Kenya shipment yard limited in Kisumu and here the president the president has been accompanied by his Burundian president who is visiting and that is exactly what is happening here in Kisumu. With the prayers thereafter, the president will go for the official planting of the commemorating tree here at the yard. And that, with the prayers being conducted by multi church leaders, we have got the Muslim leaders, with the Christians led by different interfaith denominations here. Thank you. At this particular point, the president is going to head to the planting of the commemorative tree. Of the commemorative tree. And that the commemorative okay, there you go, there you go. It's okay. All right, 
And here at this particular point, the president is going to now officially, with his Burundian president, to officially plant the commemorative tree at this particular shipyard with this one. And so this particular point, the president is opening the official, after opening and unveiling the Kenya Shipment Limited here, the president is now plant the commemorative tree at the Kenya Shipyard Limited in Kisumu. Now, this is a very important occasion for every dignitary, at least at every given point, to commemorate the good deed. And that is the Burundian president, first of all, planting that tree. Perhaps a sign of respect and a sign of honor at this particular event. And followed by his host, President Uru Kenyatta, who is also going to plant a commemorative tree. Now, that was started by President of Burundi, who is visiting and who is also going to be the guest of honor during the Madaraka Day celebration to be held tomorrow in Kisuma. And thereafter, President Uru Kenyatta, the host president, will also plant his commemorative tree at this particular event. Remember, this particular event is coming to you live from Kisumu. And right, and at this particular point, it is the turn for the president. President of Burundi has planted his tree. Who is going to be followed closely by the host president, President Uru Kenyatta, who is going to plant his commemorative tree next. So uh, that is President Ukrainata now planting his commemorative tree at the Kenya shipyard here in Kisumu. There you go. It is an important event for any particular event here with the President planting this particular tree. Um, this marks a very, very uh, particular point and um, milestone in the particular point at what the president said that uh, this particular thing is going to uplift the economic stability of this particular region as well as the East, East Africa region. And that is why he managed to invite the Burundian president as the host, uh, as the guest of honor for this particular event. This, thank you so much. Now that is the president, president of Burundi, who's already planted their commemorative tree. And thereafter, now we are moving to the Kenya shipyard. Kenya shipyards. And at this particular point, the president and his uh, visiting head of are also moving to the right. It is a busy day here. It's a very hot day with the president already coming in. There you have it. That is the president. That is the president moving towards uh, with his host president. All right. They're moving now to the dome with the president, visiting president, together with they're moving there. Now, this is an amazing event here because this is part of the movement that the president coming to commission and to open here that at this particular point, the president made sure that the project which was started is coming to completion in the next actual opening of this particular yard. Now, the president so later on later on
ensure that Kenya positions itself as a, a trade hub in the region. Kisumu County is well positioned. It is a gateway to the East African region. The lake connects Kenya to countries such as Uganda, Tanzania. These are some of the biggest uh, trade partners Kenya has had over the years. And with the East African community having been revitalized over the last couple of years, uh, the hope is that the Kenya Shipyards Limited is going to play that pivotal role in uh, fueling this engagement between Kenya and the East African region. The government approved in cooperation of Kenya Shipyards Limited in uh, the year 2000 and, uh, 2020 to address operational requirements uh, which will enable it to undertake commercial enterprises. It is important to also remember that uh, the Kenya Defence Forces through the Kenya Navy has a big say in this matter. The services that uh, Kenya's men and women are offering has been extended to this particular sector, which for the next couple of years will move to ensure that uh, Kenya grows economically and when it comes to marine and cargo transport on Kenya's um, Lake Victoria, the government and the country will be able to earn some much needed uh, revenue which will in turn help in the development of this particular country. The mandate of the Kenya Shipyards Limited is to lead and to catalyze the introduction of the new shipbuilding industry in Eastern Africa with a focus on meeting the local demand for the ministries, departments and agencies with maritime assets and other domestic and regional clients. The Kenya Shipyards Limited unique shipbuilding mandate uh, devotes into the national development agenda through the blue economy transformation. This contributes directly to the manufacturing pillar of the Big Four agenda and adds to the GDP in line with the government's vision 2030. The government assigned the Kenya Shipyards Limited three projects which are ongoing both in Kisumu and Mombasa. Uh, that is the upgrade of the Kisumu Yard, uh, the construction of the second wagon ferry, otherwise known as MV Uhuru 2, at the Kisumu, and refit of... Uh, the Shupavu in Mombasa. The construction of the wagon ferry will boost the transportation of goods and passengers within the Lake Victoria Basin and spur development in the Nyanza and western regions of Kenya. It will create employment opportunities for the youth as well as open up trade potential in the adjoining areas. The Kenya Shipyards Limited has partnered with MS Damen Gorinchem for skills and technology transfer and capacity building. On the ground in both Mombasa and Kisumu shipyards, constructional and upgrade works are actively being implemented. The refit of uh, Kenneth Shupavu is scheduled to begin in July of 2021 after commissioning of the slipway at uh, Kendibi Mtongwe. The launch of uh, the Kenya Shipyards Limited will transform the economic fortunes of many people in the Great Lakes region. It is also important to note that uh, a lot of works has been taking place at the Shipyards Limited where we are currently. There is uh, dredging going on and uh, this exercise is expected to take six months. Already three months and a couple of weeks have already been exhausted. The work is uh, uh, more than half, um, more than 50% done and uh, in the next couple of months the company which has been contracted to uh, dredge the port will be able to meet that particular mandate. It is also important to note that as it takes, um, uh, as it takes the dredging exercise here in Kisumu, another dredging exercise is concurrently underway at uh, uh, the crossing point in Mbita. The bridge that connects the mainland to the Rusinga um, is currently 
um, in use and uh, the dredging is also underway to ensure that uh, water mixes freely. Uh, scientists did uh, conduct their research in that particular area and uh, it was discovered that there were some algae uh, that was growing which was a sign that uh, the waters are not mixing as it should. The dredging is supposed to take six months and by August that particular exercise will be done and hopefully the port of Kisumu and uh, uh, the area in Beta will be able to serve the purpose that uh, they are supposed to. It is uh, also important to note that Kisumu Port is uh, uh, positioned in uh, Kisumu Central, within Kisumu Town, um, that is Kisumu County. It is situated on the shores of Lake Victoria, the second largest freshwater lake in the world. The, catchment area of Lake Victoria, which encompasses parts of Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, and Burundi, has a population of around 35 million and a GDP of uh, some 30 billion US dollars. That is 40% of the total East African community economy. Approximately uh, some 500,000 people live in Kisumu town and uh, 10 million in the Kisumu region uh, that uh, covers uh, counties such as Vihiga, Kakamega, uh, as well as uh, counties such as Homa Bay, Siaya, Migori, uh, which is still considered a region within Kisumu. Kisi County is also considered a region within Kisumu, as well as Nandi County and uh, Kericho County. As such, Kisumu is the third largest city in Kenya and a commercial center with diverse and uh, uh, partly unexploited resources in agriculture, commercial, industrial, tourism, and transport services. The port of Kisumu is one of the ports on Lake Victoria that offer organized shipping services on the lake. The other ports are Port Bell and Jinja in Uganda, and Mwanza, Bukoba, and Musoma in Tanzania. Out of these ports, Kisumu, Mwanza, and Port Bell are the largest in terms of throughput. Kisumu port it uh, was established in 1901 and has been a critical link in an integrated East African rail and water transportation system with a particular focus on freight transport. Historically, a marine transport on the lake together with the rail network played a key part on the transportation of cargo and passengers to and from landlocked countries such as Uganda. Inland uh, shopping or shipping in uh, the lake formed an important component of an intermodal supply chain along the central and northern corridor linking Mombasa and Dar es Salaam ports. By the mid 20th century, the East African Railway and Abbas Corporation, also known as EARHC, operated regularly sailing from Kisumu to Port Bell in Uganda and Mwanza in Tanzania using rail ferries that carried rail wagons loaded directly from rail tracks in the three ports. It, it is as a sneak peek the president will flag off a shipment of petroleum products from the port of Kisumu that is part of the exercise that uh, you will watch live on KBC Channel 1. Kisumu port where this particular uh, function is taking place occupies uh, about 17.5 hectares of land uh, with a stacking area designed to accommodate a throughput of 15,000 uh, TEUs uh, per annum. And uh, similarly, uh, taking Kisumu's uh, uh, import figure of 21,943 tons as a starting point, and taking into account all developments and economic growth since the year 2014, Kisumu's local uh, cargo imports are estimated to increase to approximately 130,000 uh, tons by 2025 and further to 180,000 tons by uh, 2035.
for the construction of the second wagon ferry, MV Uhuru 2 in Kisumu. The key laying ceremony showcases the Kenya shipyards' uh, limited uh, capabilities and project it as a critical player in shipbuilding industry in Kenya, which is ready to play its rightful role in achieving the government's big four agenda, especially in the manufacturing sector. The Kenya Shipyards Limited is focused on leveraging on its business relationships with the uh, ministries, departments and agencies and networks of its strategic partners to penetrate and maintain its captive market comprising mainly of players in the blue economy. The market will also include private business people and neighboring countries that have interest in the maritime industry. The Kenya Shipyards Limited conceptual framework embodied in its vision and mission points to an entity that is set to carve a niche in shipbuilding development regionally in concert with the government's development goals as contemplated in Vision 2030. The uh, president and his Burundian counterpart are currently being taken on a tour of the, the KSL boardroom and a brief meeting uh, will precede a photo session which, of course, will be beamed live on KBC Channel 1. This broadcast is courtesy of KBC and the Kenya Defense Forces, which plays an integral part in this particular process. Currently, where we are, the port of Kisumu operates only at a fraction of its capacity and uh, former throughput due to the deterioration of the rail connection from Mombasa to Kisumu, transit cargo volumes have decreased steeply over the last decades. The Ford facility handles a number of uh, operations and uh, it is also key to note that uh, there are some cargo which are still being transported through this particular facility uh, fertilizers as well. Um, there is cement that is also being transported using this uh, facility and um, some uh, farm produce as well, um, considering that uh, Kisumu is a gateway to the East Africa uh, region. And um, all cargo volumes have dwindled uh, over the last couple of years due to the challenges um, to do with uh, the rail service, of course, which um, is now being improved, the uh, rail service from Nakuru to Kisumu is being revamped and that will enable the transportation of volumes of cargo from Kenya's hinterland to uh, her neighbors such as Uganda and uh, Tanzania and other countries which really consider the lake region as a tool that uh, facilitates trade between them and the Republic of Kenya. Now, port facilities are grouped in a wide area of land, um, some six hectares in size. This area includes... Uh, my colleague Victor Lo is joining me uh, once again on the commentary and uh, uh, Victor has been uh, covering the entry of the two presidents uh, from the gate where we did see uh, a, a tree being planted in commemoration of this important occasion. Uh, Victor, it has been a very um, important exercise so far. Uh, kindly take us through what we expect going forward. Right. At this particular point, the president, President Uhuru Kenyatta, and his visiting counterpart, Burundian president, are still holed up in a meeting to get the briefing on what's going to be happening in the subsequent hours remaining at this particular Kenya Shipyard Limited, this newly refurbished and built area for the Kenya Shipment Yards here in Kisumu. It is a milestone for the 
uh, the marine transport in the country and of course many people are looking forward to how it's going to pan out in the coming days in the coming weeks and even the coming years and it's going to completely change the face and that is going to be happening now at this particular point the president and his visiting counterpart that is Bundesland president are still hold up in a meeting thereafter they are going to have a special photo session at this particular point uh, probably just my cameraman can just move slightly uh, just to show at this particular point the president and his entourage are going to be having a photo session at this particular point they'll hold up in a meeting and a brief one on how things are going to be done now this is the exact particular place that the president and his visiting counterpart Burundian president are going to be having their photo session right now they're still hold up they're still going to do that i'm still right now i'm still going to hand you over to my colleague Edward Kabasa to continue the commentary briefly then come back to you overview of uh, the Kisumu port. The port imports uh, a number of um, commodities, among them sugar, cotton seed cake as well. Uh, quite an interesting um, commodity to note and uh, bottled water and sodas. Uh, we know that um, Kenya do consume a number of imported uh, products and of course it does its own exports as well. Kenya is uh, known for its horticulture. Uh, Kenya does also export uh, commodities such as coffee and tea, um, a favorite of uh, very many countries. Recently, Kenya did export uh, so many tons of avocado, and uh, within a very short time, uh, the country was able to rake in uh, billions of Kenyan shillings in revenue thanks to this um, important exports which of course gives a lot of um, opportunities to so many Kenyan farmers who have ventured into the agribusiness sector over the last couple of years. Uh, taking Kisumu's uh, 2014 um, export figure of 28,038 tons as a starting point and taking into account all development and economic growth, Kisumu's local cargo exports are estimated to increase to approximately 160,000 tons by the year 2025 and further 230,000 tons by 2035. Similarly, uh, taking Kisumu's 2014 import figure of 21,943 tons as a starting point and taking into account all development and economic growth, Kisumu's local cargo imports are estimated to increase to approximately 130,000 uh, tons by the year 2025, as uh, earlier indicated. Uh, so this important occasion is going to set the country forward uh, towards achieving that particular objective. Of course, there is a lot to talk about in terms of political goodwill. The president, on so many occasion, or occasions, has... Um, appealed to leaders especially from this region to uh, give the government that good political will to help spur economic growth now i hand you back to victor Olu, who is uh, standing uh, right in front of the uh, kenya shipyards limited boardroom office uh, with more details we do expect a photo session to follow the president is still inside the building being briefed and taken around uh, what uh, the Kenya Navy and the Kenya Defense Forces as well as the Kenya Ports Authority and the Kenya Railway they have been up to over the last couple of months just to ensure that we get here Victor thereafter and thereafter all all these things are going to be given now the president is still hold up in a brief meeting who have joined them in that pre in that meeting and now we have got visiting president of Burundi uh, we have got president Rukenyata Odium leader Ludinga and of course we have got the host governor governor Peter Anyang Nyongo after that we are going to see them walk out and of course they are going to be given an illustration now behind me here is an illustration of what has been happening here now that is the official badge of the Kenya Shipyards Limited the KS 
course, this is the body mandated to run this particular entity here at the port of Kisumu and, of course, uh, in conjunction with the uh, Damen Shipyards Group. But this one here pretty explains the kind of a ship that is already here. This one is a profile, profile this profile SB of that particular uh, that particular ship. Now it is estimated that this ship is um, is going to be carrying more and more cargo. This is a cargo ship that is going to be moving uh, that is going to be taken at this particular uh, with this particular ship uh, this is a ship section already this one is there uh, which has been refurbished at a cost of 200 million shillings now this is just but an illustration and it's been able to have different blocks we have got block one block two up to block nine now up to block nine it's able to carry so many containers to different countries and just moving along with me after that we also have a building sequence of this particular ship which is already up and running the uh, the MV Uhuru which is already this is the weather cargo deck this a cargo section but the most important one is this party particular one here now this is a final illustration of the MV Uhuru ship that is already up and running and President Uhuru Kenyatta is going to officially uh, commission the MV Uhuru one that has been refurbished as a, at a cost of 200 million shillings now yesterday when we had uh, a talk uh, by some of the government officials said that it was way cheaper to refurbish this particular ship which has been uh, left parking for the last 15 years and after the refurbishment of this one it's now going to start transporting fuel and for the last three months after it was refurbished now this particular ship as you can see this is an illustration of how it is now this is a clear picture of exactly what is in the waters right now and president Uhur kenyatta will in the next hour or so will officially flag off this particular ship to ginger uganda loaded with fuel now that is exactly how it looks like we witnessed when this particular ship was being loaded by 24 uh, 24 uh, wagons or 24 wagons which is completely loaded with fuel being transported to Jinja in Uganda. And that is exactly why President Uru Kenyatta is quite here. Somebody might ask how important is this one? Now this ship had been docked for 15 years but when it was uh, refurbished and it was made usable once again now we can see how important it is. But some of the government officials we talked to yesterday said that it was way cheaper because initially uh, some of the government ships or even some of the ships that uh, were completely grounded would be taken to Finland or Netherlands or other countries which would cost a lot of money transporting them there until they come back to that particular place so that is MV Uhuru that is going to be commissioned in the next few now this is the uh, an, an illustration of course a satellite kind of illustration of how the dock is going to look like but this one is before it was upgraded you can see the difference before it was upgraded and this is the Kisumu yard before an upgrade and of course a lot of work has gone into this one in particular way the dredging has taken place and according to the management here they said that uh, they have done so far 60 to 60.2 percent of the work that is required to be done now this is just an illustration initially it used to look like this one but after it was an upgrade it completely looks completely different up to the standard that is required up to the national standard now this is the kisumu sheep yard all right this is the Kisumu shipyard and exactly how it looks like and of course this is going to be how it's going to be looking like a lot of refurbishment happening that is the illustration of so far the building up there a lot of, uh, uh, of, of, of work still happening and of course if you look at this ship down here it is one of the docking ships that is going to be used for, uh, for, 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 for repairing the ships, probably uh, just where we are. But let me just show where we are. This is where we are right now. This is the area where the whole event is taking place. And this is the new refurbished Kenya Shipyard Limited, their offices. And this one here, this place, is a dry dock. Now, anytime they want to repair the ship, they would bring it inside here. They fill this place with, with water, and then they drag their, 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 the ship is brought inside here, and then the water is being drained. If you can look somewhere here, there is a very big, something like a door, and water would be allowed to get into this particular dry dock, and thereafter, 
Once the ship is brought in for repairs, then they drain water and the ship will be lowered down to this particular point for repairs. So this is the water. This is a lot of dredging that took place. The whole of this place was completely immersed in uh, uh, water hyacinth. But as you can see, already a lot of work has happened. This particular place was refurbished and it has been fleshed it down uh, at a cost uh, that the government says that was way cheaper as compared to how this place. So the whole of this place initially was completely covered is in water hyacinth. But as you can see, it is now looking beautiful. And of course, even that side, there's a ship that's docking there. So this is the area and that is the railway line moving to that particular venue. It is a lot of shipyard that is going. Uh, thank you very much, Victor Olu. Uh, we are still waiting for the two uh, heads of state to uh, walk out and. Um, uh, sit for the photo session uh, which will take place uh, before the president of Kenya and the president of Burundi proceed to the main tent for the, of, uh, the occasion to officially begin. It is a very important occasion for the two countries uh, considering the bilateral relationship between Kenya and Burundi. The president of Burundi, uh, President Everest Ndashimiye, uh, will be the guest of honor uh, during the celebration of uh, Kenya's Madaraka Day, which will take place tomorrow here in Kisumu County. Uh, President Ndashimiye and Kenya's President Uhuru Kenyatta did preside over the signing of bilateral agreements um, earlier at uh, the State Lodge here in Kisumu. And uh, they did also hold bilateral talks where they exchanged views and discussed Kenya and Burundi's strategic cooperation. These two countries which are joined in the East African community have been uh, forging good working relations since 2011 when uh, cooperation was signed between the two nations. Uh, the uh, two countries, Kenya and uh, Burundi, uh, do cooperate in various areas of socio-economic and political development anchored on the Joint Permanent uh, Commission for the Cooperation, otherwise known as JPCC, signed in May 2008 as the main framework of bilateral co uh, cooperation. The areas of cooperation within uh, the JPCC include agriculture and livestock development, trade and investment, air transport, education and research, tourism, security, technical assistance in various fields of development and political consultations. With the uh, commissioning of this particular facility here in Kisumu Central constituency of Kisumu County, uh, the Burundi uh, government and the people of Burundi will of course um, get some great mileage, a needed one for that matter. Uh, with regards to Lake uh, Victoria and its ability to connect the East African community. Uh, Kisumu being a gateway, it plays a very important role. The countries, of course, uh, that form the East Africa community, uh, those that utilize this particular facility, have always um, uh, found ways to agree on how they approach issues to do with the trade. Development in all these countries, of course, affect one another, uh, with Kenya having revamped the railway system. Uh, the free flow of cargo from the port of Mombasa to the port of Kisumu, of course, is expected to uh, be facilitated um, using that revamped facility. The uh, fairing of passengers uh, from Mombasa to Kisumu as well uh, will be improved. The standard gauge railway has been in operation for uh, quite a number of years now and um, the results have been clear for everyone to see. The movement of commodity and uh, uh, passengers from Nairobi to Kisumu is also expected to be boosted in the next coming or in the next months um, with the uh, revamping of the rail service uh, from Nakuru to Kisumu.
and the hope is that in the next couple of months or in the next uh, couple of years uh, the transportation of passengers uh, from the port of Kisumu to other regions um, will be um, happening uh, there is a lot uh, that uh, Kenya can harness on this uh, particular uh, lake the commander-in-chief of the defense forces of Kenya the president uh, is currently in the Kenya shipyards boardroom uh, meeting the directors being briefed on what the uh, shipyards limited has been up to um, and uh, after that there will be a photo session and uh, the president the two presidents the Kenyan president Uhuru Kenyatta and Burundian uh, president uh, Ndiashimi Everest will be taken through the Kenya shipyards shipyard model uh, which uh, my colleague Victor Lu did uh, uh, take you through a couple of minutes ago. The two heads of state will be guided on a tour of the Kisumu Yard and its operations by the production manager. And thereafter, there will be speeches and launch of the Kenya Shipyards Limited. And uh, that will take place within the plenary uh, tent. And after that, there will be the keel laying ceremony also known as the coin ceremony this is the there on your screen the photo session is uh, about to begin the guests are take have taken the place the president of the republic of kenya uh, the CSS Rachel Mamo is also there, Monica Juma, the ambassador, is also there. Uh, the governor for Kisumu County, Governor Peter Anyang Nyongo, is also seated there, as well as the, um, the generals uh, from the Kenya Defense Forces who are leading a dedicated team of servicemen and women in this particular engagement, taking the Kenya Shipyards Limited to the next level. Um, using this uh, particular facility here in Kisumu Central Constituency, Kisumu County. A photo session um, thereafter, the president will be taken on a tour of the model and uh, the production manager will be leading that particular exercise. May the fish be removed. The fish to be removed.
in three, two, one. It's being uh, overseen by the production manager and it is just adjacent to the Kenya Shipyards Limited office entrance here um, in Kisumu uh, County. After that, the heads of state and other dignitaries will be taken on a guided tour of Kisumu Yard and its operations uh, here. Uh, by the production manager and uh, later the dignitaries will converge uh, inside the main tent for speeches and the launch of the Kenya Shipyards Limited. And after that there will be the kill ceremony also known as the laying or the coin ceremony. This is uh, an important uh, part of uh, shipbuilding which uh, uh, signifies really uh, good fortunes for the ship. The main objective of um, a ship is to generate revenue. So the key laying or the coin ceremony is a significant stage in the building of a ship. And we will be witnessing that uh, later on live on KBC Channel 1. President Uhuru Kenyatta will be leading that particular exercise um, just for good tidings as far as uh, shipbuilding is concerned. The coin ceremony is an, is an event which takes place at the key lane in the early stages of a ship's construction. In it, the shipbuilders place one or two coins under the kill block of the new ship to bless the ship and as a sim operation of the, of the facility. Gentlemen of the facility. Gentlemen, sir, the shipyard will be the end of my presentation. I would kindly like to hand you over to the, uh, to the production manager who will guide you on the rest of the tour. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you. Yes, sir. Your Excellencies, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Mulungu, the production manager, Kenya Shipyards Limited. Sirs, welcome for a brief tour of the facilities within the Sumo. Welcome, sir. Sir, here I'm going to brief you on the transition since we came here in 2019 to where we are today and where we are heading to at the end of this year, sir. This is the Sumo. Kenya Shipyards Limited Shipyard Model by the production manager. It is a, a summary of the undertakings here, the layout of this particular facility, which has been under refurbishment for a couple of months now. And uh, this is the climax of that particular exercise. And um, the president is being taken through the work that uh, the Kenya Navy and the Kenya Ports Authority as well as the Kenya Railway they have been engaging in over the last uh, couple of months uh, to uh, get us to this particular day. The government assigned the Kenya Shipyards Limited three projects which are ongoing both in Kisumu and Mombasa. That is the upgrade of the Kisumu Yard where we are construction of the second wagon ferry MV Uhuru 2 at Kisumu and Rifits of Shupavu in Mombasa. The construction of the wagon ferry 
will boost the transportation of goods and passengers within the Lake Victoria Basin and spur development in the Nyanza and western regions of Kenya. It will also create employment opportunities for the youth as well as open up trade potential in the adjoining areas. The Kenya Shipyards Limited has partnered with MS Damen Gorinchim for skills and technology transfer and capacity building. On the ground in both Mombasa and Kisumu shipyards, constructional and upgrade works are actively being implemented. The refit of Shipavu is scheduled to begin in July 2021 after commissioning of the slipway at uh, Mtongwe. The launch of the Kenya Shipyards Limited will transform the economic fortunes of many people in the Great Lakes region. The president is uh, now being headed uh, to a guide of the Kisumu Yard and its operations. And uh, the action is being undertaken by the production manager. Earlier, my colleague Victor Lo did uh, take you through uh, some pictorials of this uh, facility and um, it includes an illustration of uh, the wagon ferry. Uh, there is also a photo on the companies that uh, are involved in this. It is a joint venture. The president will uh, let a flag up a shipment of uh, petroleum products an exercise which will take place in a matter of minutes. This is expected to be a brief ceremony. A lot of work has been going on and uh, that similar work will continue after this launch. And uh, part of that, you will follow it live on KBC Channel 1. The president of Burundi he is a guest of the state, and um, he will be addressing the country uh, tomorrow uh, during the Madaraka Day celebrations. Burundi and Kenya have, in the recent years, um, invigorated trade between the two countries. Uh, the bilateral ties between the two countries has also been strengthened uh, by their engagement in the East African community. Today, the Kenya Shipyard Limited is uh, being formally commissioned concurrently with the key laying ceremony for the construction of the second wagon ferry, MV Uhuru 2, in Kisumu. The key laying ceremony showcases uh, Kenya Shipyards Limited capabilities and projected as a critical player in the shipbuilding industry in Kenya, which is uh, ready to play its rightful role in achieving the government's big four agenda, especially in the manufacturing uh, sector. This side of Lake Victoria has, over the years, um, had its fair challenges. Uh, there has been a lot of transformation taking place. Um, earlier, we did take a tour of the facility. Uh, we did see uh, the machine that is responsible uh, for the elimination of the water hyacinth, which has been choking the lake for, for years. And um, a lot of work has um, been taking place to ensure that uh, that water hyacinth is gotten rid of. And um, if you take a tour of Lake Victoria, especially um, in Kisumu, you will see the amount of work that uh, has been done to ensure that this weed that has been choking the lake has been gotten rid of. Uh, the port area... Uh, which is currently being occupied by the Kenya Shipyards Limited, has also gone or undergone through a big transformation. 
and that transformation is still underway to ensure that uh, the port is uh, utilized in the manner in which it is supposed to. Kisumu being a gateway um, to the East African community and other landlocked countries. countries, this is a very important engagement. Now, I will hand you uh, to the floor where the President of the Republic of Kenya and the President of Burundi and other dignitaries have entered the plenary tent. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Your Excellency Honorable Uhuru Kenyatta, President of the Republic of Kenya and Commander-in-Chief of Defense Forces. Your Excellency Evaliste Ndayashimie, President of the Republic of Burundi, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. With the permission of Your Excellencies, Colonel Retired Oguna will guide today's program. Colonel, we may continue. Uh, thank you very much. You welcome, Your Excellencies. Allow me to take this opportunity, Your Excellency, to take you through the program that we are going to run this afternoon. This afternoon we are going to undertake the inauguration of the Kenya Shipyards Limited and that ceremony will entail the handing over of uh, instruments of operations to the MD uh, Kenya Shipyards Limited and thereafter it shall be followed by a key laying ceremony. To start us right off Your Excellency, we are going to have a 10 minute a video that shows the journey of the Kisumu uh, Shipyard Limited and I request your excellencies to view the, uh, the show from the screen right in front of you. The video, please. You will recall in 2018, uh, President Kenyatta hosted uh, the first high-level global conference on the blue economy. And it was clear that this was the next frontier of human development. Now, the Sh Kenya Shipyard Limited is created to catalyze that dream, that vision. Because the intention is to create a maritime industry that is able to build, to maintain, to repair ships and vessels both for our Navy, but also for other MDAs that deal with the maritime domain. The Kenya Shipyards Limited, as you know, the two shipyards, uh, one in Mombasa and the other one in uh, Kisumu, have a security uh, component in them, uh, in that the Kenya Shipyards Limited uh, first mandate is to sustain our operational capability uh, of the Kenya Navy. In the sense that previously we used to take our ships uh, to the Netherlands for midlife refit. And therefore, uh, that obviously has a cost implication. So, what has happened, uh, therefore, is that uh, we have decided uh, to be able to do these ships ourselves in Kenya. Uh, that way, you shorten the lead time between the time that you send your ship and the time that you make it available uh, to the commanders. This shipyard will allow us to shorten the time frame because in an operational environment, you need the assets uh, readily available as fast as possible. Uh, Kenya Shipyard Limited was born out of the need of the Kenya Navy requiring a facility that would allow them, uh, in other words, a shipyard that would allow them to dock, maintain, refit, repair, and uh, service their ships. So the government then provided for the procurement of such a facility way back in 2018, and the construction commenced. In the process, the Ministry of Defense established that the facility that was procured would provide beyond the requirements of the Navy. And the Ministry of Defense then proposed to the government to consider using the same facility for providing for similar requirements for other ministries, departments, and agencies in terms of maritime requirement. In a sitting of the National Security Council of September 2020, the, it was approved, uh, the concept was approved, and hence Kenya Shipyards Limited was formed 
to provide for specialized requirements for the Kenya Navy as well as for the other ministries, departments and agencies. To allow it to operate uh, flexibly, Kenya Shipyards then was separated from the Kenya Navy and uh, incorporated as a limited company that would provide for the requirements of the specialized security agencies but also to do uh, generate revenues by providing for um, the private market. This port was actually constructed way back in uh, 1901 and basically it was meant for processing of cargo that would be transported across the lake as well as refit, repair, maintenance and construction of ships. Uh, in terms of construction, this particular facility had and still has a dry dock of around 100 meters, a slipway of 42 meters and another slipway of 84 meters, basically for moving ships out and into water. Now we are upgrading and we are tooling and we are actually going to have the skill set that will allow us to construct, repair and maintain ships here. The area initially was soggy and we had to fill it almost 2.1 meters high to come out of the level of the lake water. The Kisumu yard was not in a state to construct a ship, so there was a need to upgrade the yard to be able to construct a ship, simply because there were no workshops, there were no equipment, no tools, no personnel who were trained. We faced the yard upgrade into two, phase one and phase two. Phase one was only uh, concentrated on the area where we are going to commence our ship construction, while the second phase will be uh, going on concurrently together with the construction of the work on the ferry. When we came here, uh, all we found were warehouses, uh, a part of the houses for the Kenya Railways uh, that were at the yard, the office complex that we're currently using. Uh, we renovated it, uh, mainly it was just a warehouse, but we partitioned it and uh, we put a first floor and did uh, a new cladding to it. So most of those buildings were uh, dilapidated, which we demolished and now we started constructing the shipbuilding area. First, uh, we noticed the ground was quite unstable, which was excavated and stabilized with a material called uh, the crusher run. After we achieved the stabilized ground, uh, we did blinding. Then after the blinding, we did reinforcement, and then we did casting of the uh, slab for the shipbuilding area. The slab for the shipbuilding areas within the shipbuilding area, we have uh, 140 millimeter slab thick for the shipbuilding area just to accommodate the weight of the ship panels. And then on the sides, uh, it's surrounded by uh, a bottleable uh, truck that is supposed to be used by the crane, which is around 260 tons. So the slab around the shipbuilding area, uh, we did a thickness of 250 millimeters just to hold the weight of the same. So mainly uh, works were actually in preparation for the wagon ferry construction. When a country has a pool of competences, I think the smart thing to do is to deploy that pool of competences in order to deliver the national agenda. And that is what we are doing, contributing to the national aspirations of our motherland. The shipyard, to a large extent, will have more uh, civilian uh, workers there, specialists, uh, than KDF. And what that means is that we become an employer. Uh, you will know that one of the key challenges we are facing in this country is employment of youth who finish uh, you know, uh, colleges and universities. So KDF then uh, will, will be able to get in as a job creator, uh, which I think is very, very important. This also brings in technology transfer and skills, uh, you know, upscaling. We have a technical uh, partnership agreement with Darman. He's one of the largest ship, ship making uh, company in the world uh, to be able to transfer skills uh, using those who have done it before and for us to be able to, uh, to get the technology. As you can see, we are just upgrading and constructing the yard and right now we are employing well over around 350 personnel. When we are starting the construction in earnest, I think we'll go well beyond 1,000 in terms of now employment. Since the inception of uh, KSL, a lot of uh, youth have gotten employment and engagement.
carpenters, we have steel fixers, we have plumbers, and uh, in charges all the spa, the foremen who are on them. Sir. On this side, we are assisting the, the masons, the carpenters, the plumbers in the interpretation and implementation of the, of the drawings. Actually, it's all about converting the paperwork into the actual structure. I'm from Kisumu. I'm a welder. I'm working with Kenya Shipyard. And I love the unity of the military I'm working with. I really admire the unity they have. And the advice they give towards very good. I've been in the field for four years, but uh, I've never been in the construction site. So this being a construction site, the machines or the equipment I'm dealing with are the new machines on my side. So I'm gaining experience. Nashkuru maishangu wa mebadilika. Ni mrada mbole neleza ki maisha mi mwenye kama kijana. Ki kazi, ki akili, na kusocialize pia. We have a welfare program for the workers. Currently, we are working on a, a two shift, that is a 24 hour shift. The enumeration and payment, we ensure that they are done on time so that the workers are paid, they are, more, they are motivated well enough. Even transportation, we are providing local transport for the people around here. In fact, for the night shift where they have to work past the half hours, we ensure that they get to their respective homes at once. When, when we are talking about construction of ship, it means that there will be revival of the steel industry within this region. We are yet to see more industries opening up because of steel. And even not even that, even the spare part industries for the marine sector, they are going to grow. So let me tell you, Kisumu is going to be over. The Kenya Shipyard Limited is the vehicle by which can the maritime industry and realize the benefits of the blue economy through supporting um, our business people, through supporting the shipbuilding industry in the East African region. And I believe it's going to be contributing not just to East Africa, but to the entire world. The defense becomes not just a consumer of the exchequer, but a revenue generator. Because this shipyard will make surpluses. Those surpluses will feed into the exchequer. And once you feed with the exchequer, then KDF becomes a force for good. I thank you very much, Your Excellencies. That is the journey of Kisumu uh, Shipyard as well as the Kenya Shipyard Limited. At this point, Your Excellencies, uh, allow me to request the CDF uh, to come forward and invite His Excellency the President of the Republic of Kenya. Uh, Honorable Huru Kenyatta to preside over the inauguration ceremony of the Kenya Shipyards Limited. CDF, sir. Thank you. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Burundi. Your Excellency, the President uh, of the Republic of Kenya and Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Forces, distinguished uh, invited guests, uh, Your Excellency, uh, the launch that we are uh, going to have today uh, is a historic one. Uh, and let me, on behalf of the board members, uh, who am the chair, uh, thank you uh, for coming over and also being accompanied by the, the, the President of the Republic of Burundi uh, to witness this historic uh, undertaking. In terms of how we intend to do this, Your Excellency, uh, we request you uh, to come forward and so that you can be able to uh, present uh, the instruments of authority uh, to the Managing Director. As well, Your Excellency, you will be uh, doing the key lane uh, to signify the commencement of the construction of the ship. I have to assure you, Your Excellency, that uh, the material for the construction of the ship 
are arriving uh, in three days' time in Mombasa. They will be transported uh, over here uh, to Kisumu. And in a week's time, uh, we will start uh, the formal uh, construction of the ship. And Your Excellency, uh, in keeping with your timelines, I uh, have mentioned it to everyone working with the ship, shipyard uh, that uh, the timelines you've given are cast in stone. And I think everybody is very much aware that we need a ship <laughs> delivered uh, on time and at the highest quality. May I request Your Excellency, sir, uh, to come forward as you present the instruments authority uh, to the managing director. Managing director, please. Sound, sound, please. His Excellency will hand over the certificate of incorporation to the MD Kenya Shipyards Limited. Then it will be followed by handing over the seal of the Kenya Shipyards Limited and then the flag. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Now cross over to the key laying ceremony. Please unveil it. This ceremony, Your Excellency, is involved a bit of soldering, and therefore there will be some sparks that will be flying out, and therefore I request that uh, you put on some protective clothes assisted by the ADC. Now, key laying is a formal recognition of the start of a ship construction. It is often marked by ceremony attended by dignitaries from the shipbuilding company and the ultimate owners of the ship. Key laying, therefore, is one of the four specially celebrated events in the life of a ship. The others are launching, commissioning, and decommissioning. In earlier times, the event recognized as the key laying was initially for the initial placement of the central timber, making up the backbone of a vessel. Modern ships today are now largely built in a series of prefabricated complete hull sections rather than being built around a single keel. And therefore, the ceremony will involve soldering of a coin onto the keel, which really is, uh, signifies the beginning of the construction of a ship.
thank you very much, Your Excellency. I now request that uh, you remain standing where you are for a dedication prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, without your blessings, we would not have been able to achieve the plans we had for this shipping industry. We humbly pray for the Kenya we are limited, beginning to share today. Let it grow and become a shining star in Africa and the world. Now we ask you to bless this key, which is the start point of ship. It is a milestone for our country. We pray for those who are working on this project and on them with the integrity, professionalism, excellence, and the spirit of teamwork, so that they may bring the work started to be here into successful completion. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mm. I, I thank you very much, Your Excellency. I now request that I be blessed with the sprinkling of water. After it is done, Your Excellencies, you may take your seats. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, uh, for that session. The session that marks really uh, the beginning of uh, ship construction. percent of the task. One, uh, in terms of refurbishing uh, the yard, and secondly, completion uh, of the refurbishment of MV Uhuru uh, which had been in disuse for close to uh, 
a, 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 decade, a decade and a half. This particular fit was possible because of the leadership uh, that uh, was provided here uh, by a team led by Lieutenant Colonel Mudungu, uh, whose passion for this job uh, has seen this transformation come true. In addition, Your Excellency, uh, the repair of this particular facility has costed, costed much less than had been quoted by vendors in the past. Uh, for example, uh, the refurbishment of the MV Uhuru had been quoted for 1.5 billion shillings, while the team uh, spent only 50 million to refurbish the ship. Uh, today, this ship has delivered over 50 million liters of fuel uh, between uh, Kisumu and Jinja in Uganda. And when we look forward uh, to having the next MV Uhuru 2, uh, which is much larger, uh, we therefore will, have a will become a dominant force in terms of logistic uh, support uh, within the, uh, the Lake Victoria uh, Basin. Presently, uh, Your Excellency, uh, we are looking forward uh, towards the construction of this new vessel. And as I said, uh, based on the timelines that you provide the team, we will uh, be able to deliver uh, within the time that you've uh, given us. We are very grateful, uh, Your Excellency, as well, that uh, apart from the MV Uhuru 2, the team has also designed uh, a model of fishing boats that they will intend to start producing uh, to be able to benefit the local fishermen within the region. And therefore, this partnership uh, will also be very useful as we move forward, Your Excellency. We envision that uh, the subsequent activities that uh, are being undertaken here will not only spur uh, development in uh, this region, but also within the entire uh, Eastern African region. With those remarks, Your Excellency, may I request that now, having launched the Kenya uh, Shipyards Limited, and also having laid the keel, uh, for the development of the new ship, which is going to be delivered within the timelines time that you've given, that you kindly address the nation. Your Excellency, sir. Sandy Jamedari. Uh, please be seated. Thank you. Mweshmua Rais wa Jamuhuri ya Burundi. Mweshmua Everest. Taishimiye na wageni wetu wote kutoka Burundi Officers, all ladies and gentlemen Let me say what a great pleasure it is to be here today As we launch the Kenya Shipyards Limited Here in Kisumu This is not only a significant milestone but also a transformative one for the maritime transport within Lake Victoria. And indeed, today, together with my brother, the president of Burundi, we have just laid the keel for the marine vessel Uhuru II, which will be the first ship built at Kisumu port for the last almost 70 years. This vessel will support our sister ship, which we rehabilitated, and as the CDF has said, has caused alone the movement of over 50 million liters of fuel between this port city of Kisumu and Uganda, thereby reducing the cost of fuel in Uganda as a result of the reduction in cost of transport as well as a result of the reduction in losses during transportation. So ladies and gentlemen, Kisumu has had an interesting history. 
The colonial government identified its potential as a commercial administration and transport hub for East Africa. And in 1899, the first skeletal plan for Kisumu was prepared. And this included landing places, waves along the northern lake shore near today's present airport road. The port for those years performed well, but unfortunately since the 1980s, its performance started to falter, impacted adversely, and also impacted adversely the economy of Lake Victoria and the entire region. So fellow Kenyans, in pursuing our development agenda, it was clear that the exploitation of our home waters was key in facilitating trade, industry, but also in the defense of our nation. And that is what informed the plan to revamp this once vibrant East African commercial port, which involved revival of the pier infrastructure and the vessels that we were able to revive. Indeed, regardless of what people say, I am very proud that working together with the Kenya Defense Forces, the Kenya Railways Corporation, the Kenya Coast Guard Services, and indeed other stakeholders, we have been able to refurbish this Kisumu Pier and its supporting infrastructure. This multi-agency setup has revived the original Uhuru One to see where the state, and in the last few months, we have just heard of the activity that this vessel has undertaken in three East African ports, largely Kisumu here, Jinja in Uganda, and also Musoma in Tanzania. Our presence on this pier today is therefore a culmination of the vision of those that came before us to grow this facility, the mainstay of Kisumu County and the larger Nyanza Western regions. Having succeeded with reviving the first vessel and taking into account the potential viability of water transport within Lake Victoria, we again saw the need to improve the number of vessels that will operate in Lake Victoria. Today, we launch MV Uhuru 2, not launch, but we lay the keel, the first vessel that Kenya Shipyards Limited will build. And I believe this in initiative exemplifies the notion that you do not create prosperity by stimulating economies, but rather you create prosperity by enabling people. The men and women involved in refurbishing this pier, in the construction of MV, MV Uhuru 2, will demonstrate our commitment to identify, harness, and grow the skills needed to build our economy. In tune, with a big four agenda, the Kenya Shipyards Limited will catalyze shipbuilding and technology transfer, and we shall provide an opportunity for the improvement of our metalwork operations, fitting out areas, hull design, assembly and production, slipways, dockyards, propulsion navigation technology, vessel superstructure, which will set our standard for advancement in the global shipbuilding industry. This being the direct jobs that will relate to shipbuilding, without mention of what benefit it will bring to the development of our steel industry and other associated industries that will benefit directly from this facility and a similar facility that shall be ready in Mutongwe 
by July of this year. In so doing, we will be providing decent and gainful employment to many Kenyans. Indeed, as our MD, Brigadier Otieno, has just confirmed, just in the construction of the pier, over between three and four hundred Kenyans have been employed at this facility. And with the key laying done today, over 1,000 young men and women will be employed here in the construction of the new vessel. <clears throat> the Kisumu Shipyard Branch of the Kenya Shipyards Limited is poised to serve institutional and private commercial shipbuilding interests within Lake Victoria. Further, the Kenya Shipyards Limited is also poised to offer refit, maintenance, repairs, services of all seagoing vessels. So ladies and gentlemen, having rehabilitated, which we shall be back here in August to relaunch the Nakuru Kisumu meter gauge railway line to revive rail transport in the Rift Valley Western Kenyan circuit. We are moving to improve the water transport facilities in order to complete the transport circuit that we need to facilitate movement and trade. Goods now from Mombasa and Nairobi will be transferred from rail wagons onto wagon ferries to Mbita, to Rusinga Island, to Tanzania, Uganda, definitely eventually now to Burundi. <clears throat> Concurrently, agricultural produce, manufactured goods from the wider Western Kenya region will also find a reliable and cost-effective mode of transport to Nairobi, Mombasa, and beyond. So today I urge county governments of the Western, South Rift, and Lake Victoria Basin regions to start drawing up strategies to revive farming and industrial activities by helping our people to be food secure. I believe we will be able to unlock the industrial potential of this region and indeed of the entire country. In the spirit of improving the social and commercial relations with all our neighbors, Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, and Burundi, Kisumu City becomes Kenya's frontier for trade and transport in this region. With an international airport, a pier, a railway station, this city will actualize the vision that the founding fathers of the East African community had. In concluding the remarks I have, I want to once again commend the Kenya Defense Forces, Kenya Railways Corporation, our National Police Service, the Kenya Maritime Authority. A special note of thanks to our National Youth Service who have done a tremendous job of clearing and reclaiming this facility. Ongera kwa vijana wa Kenya. To the Kenya Coast Guard, and I want to say, you have all done an excellent job. You have worked well together. You have been team players. And what you have done in the last few months to rehabilitate the rail and water transport infrastructure has done us proud as a country, and without doubt, individually and collectively, you deserve total commendation. Kwa kumalizia, mimi niseme tu ni kwa nafuraha tele. Kwa sababu, hii ni ndoto. Ndoto ya watu ambao walikuweko mbele yetu 
lakini ndoto ambaye ilikatwa kwa sababu ya udhaifu wetu sisi kama wakenya na sasa tumeanza kufufua hiyo ndoto tumeanza kufufua hiyo ndoto ndiyo wananchi wa jamhuri hii ya Kenya waweze kuwa na nafasi za kazi ambazo zinastahili kazi ambayo mtu anaweza kujua ya kwamba anaamkia kazi ya asubuhi ambaye itampatia mapato ya kujisimamia yeye na jamii yake na mambo hii yote na sitachoka kusema imewezekana kwa sababu ya amani na umoja ambaye tumekuwa nao katika taifa letu la Kenya kama sio hiyo amani ingekuwa ngumu sana kuwa tumekuja hapa kuangalia infrastructure kama hii ambayo ilikuwa imepotea kujadiliana na viongozi nataka nimshukuru waziri mkuu awali mheshimiwa Raila Odinga ni shukuru county government ya Kisumu kwa sababu tumetembea nao hapa wakati tulizunguka hapa tulikuwa tunakimbizana huku na nyoka na nini huku mambo mengine hapa makali kali na tukaketi na tukasema tutafanya kazi pamoja na tuhakikishe ya kwamba tumeifufua leo ndio sisi tuko hapa amen Leo ndiyo sisi tuko hapa. Leo hawa ni vijana mia tatu ambao hawakuwa na pahali ambao wanafanya kazi hapa. Kuanzia wiki ijayo hawa ni vijana wengine elfu moja ambao watakuwa hapa wakifanya kazi ya kujenga hii mashua mpya ambaye tumeianzisha leo. Ameni. Tusipuuze amani. Kwa sababu ni rahisi sana kwa mtu kuzoea kitu ambacho inaitwa amani. Uliza ndugu yangu ambaye ameketi hapo. Amani sio kitu ya kuchezea. Watu wanaiona tu mnafikiria ni mchezo. Amani sio mchezo. Kitu kidogo kichome inchi. Na ni kilio na umwagikaji wa damu lakini wa Kenya wakijitolea waseme sisi tutakuwa kitu kimoja angalia yale ambaye tuna uwezo ya kutimiza kwa hivyo wenzangu tupendane na tushirikiane na kwa wale ambao wanalia kwa nini jeshi jeshi je, je, hata mnaenda mpaka kotini kusema kwani mnafikiria wanajeshi sio wa Kenya mkono ambao unabeba bunduki unaoezo pia wa kubeba jembe eh? na ni jukumu letu kutumia nafasi zote ambazo tuko nazo kujenga taifa letu jameni tulieni kwa sababu umesikia na nilisema wakati nilikuwa KMC Hakuna serikali ambaye imepitia serikali ya Rais Kibaki ikakuja ikasema wanataka kufufua KMC. Hiyo ilikuwa serikali ya muungano pamoja na mheshimiwa Raila Odinga. Wakaweka bilioni moja 1.5 billion kwa KMC. Wakaenda kupaka rangi. Ya? Manyumba kudanganya watu huko kuna kitu imefanyika. Sisi tumekuja. Tumeweka on top of it zaidi ya ingine shilingi bilioni mbili kwa hiyo kiwanda. Wakapaka paka wakaongeza rangi ile walikuwa wamekosa kuongeza wakati ya kibaki. Nikapatia hawa wenzetu wafanye hii kazi nikawaambia jameni Wakenya wanaumia, wamekosa soko ya nyama yao. Na bado tuko na kiwanda hapa. 
wanajeshi wameingia huko na chini ya milioni mia tatu tunachinja nyama huko alafu unasikia wananchi hapa wakiwa sio wananchi viongozi oh mnateta mna mtateta shauri yenu lakini kazi tutafanya kwa sababu jukumu letu ni kutendea wananchi look at what is going on this was a lost case we have no problem i only wish our civilian operators our civilian administrators our civilians who we give jobs in parastatos in ministries would just do a quarter of what our brothers and sisters are doing here kenya would be transformed kwa hivyo wacha kuchochea mngitaka kuchochea mtachochea mimi nikiondoka lakini kwa wakati yangu mimi naendelea hii barabara eh kuna njia ingine na tutakuwa Mombasa tufufue hiyo tuendelee na tutarudi tuzindue reli na reli hiyo tutaitoa huko na tutajenga na wao na watu ya Kenya Railways na tukifika Kisumu mtaendelea kupiga kelele tutaiweka moto tena tuanze mpaka tufike Butere mtapiga kelele tukifanya kazi si ni namna hiyo haya mimi nasema asante sana kwa wale wote ambao wamehusika ndugu yangu mimi najua hata inchi zetu jirani kama Burundi, Rwanda, Tanzania zote zitafaidika kwa sababu ya kufufua poti hii yetu ya Kisumu. Na mimi najua ya kwamba hii pot pia itaimarisha uhusiano wetu kama inchi za Afrika Mashariki itaimarisha uhusiano ya wananchi wetu tuwe wananchi wa Afrika Mashariki kwa sababu matembezi pia yatakuwa rahisi na hiyo ndiyo tuataka na mimi nawauliza viongozi tusigawanyishe wa Kenya na story ambazo haziwezi saidia tuwaunganishe na tuwatendee kwa mambo ambayo yatajenga na yatabadilisha maisha ya wa Kenya wa kawaida wa Jamhuri ya Kenya. Nasema Mungu awabariki na Mungu awalinde. Asante ni sana. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much your excellency for accepting to officiate this very important ceremonies. And therefore your excellencies, we have come to the end of the first segment of today's program. But before we transit to the next segment, allow me, Your Excellencies, to make one key announcement. Due to the need to observe the COVID-19 containment protocol, and because of also limitation of space, only a small number of dignitaries will be allowed into the next segment. And with your permission, Your Excellency, allow me to name those who will accompany you to the next segment. The first one will be the Right Honourable, a former Prime Minister, the Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Defence, the Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Interior, Cabinet Secretary, Minister of Foreign Affairs, both Kenya and Burundi, Cabinet Secretary, National Treasury, uh, Cabinet Secretary, Transport, the CDF, His Excellency, the Governor of Kisumu County. We wish that uh, only those to accompany the excellencies to the next uh, activity. The rest of us, we request that we wait here as we'll continue to give you more information. With those remarks, Your Excellencies, I request now that we stand up for the national anthem. Thank you very much, Excellencies. 
President Uhuru Kenyatta has uh, issued a rallying call to the uh, country and its leadership to see the need to involve the Kenya Defense Forces in the development of this great republic. The President has given the example of the Kenya Meat Commission saying that previous administration had pumped billions of shillings into the Kenya Meat Commission, but the exercise mission did not bear any fruit, and hence the move to give the KDF that particular role. Uh, but uh, to matters that uh, brought the president here today, we'll show you the process that it took to construct the MB Uhuru that will be flagged off this afternoon by President Uhuru Kenyatta. Every Uhuru is a big ship. Uh, it is a 1,650 uh, tons ship mm, uh, of two engines. Uh, okay, it has been in operation for all this time uh, till a certain time when we considered rail services to a concessionaire. Then the concessionaire uh, found it that uh, he was not uh, uh, impressed with the ship operation, so the ship operation basically was like it went down and the ship was parked here at Kisumu for a period of eight to ten years. Then uh, recently the organization found it uh, important that the ship is revived. Uh, we uh, consulted a consultant to revive the ship but the figures which the consultant had given Kenya Railways, uh, Kenya Railways opted uh, to consult further and uh, uh, the government directed KDF Navy to come and assist Kenya Railways. And uh, they came on board, inspected the ship and uh, advised that the ship is still economical and uh, they were given the mandate to partner with the Kenya Railways to revive the ship. It took a period of uh, May up to November, and uh, the ship was brought back to, uh, to operation. Uh, there were so many uh, things which were revived on board the ship, the engines, uh, the navigational aids, and also the hull at large. After the renovations, the ship has assisted the organization First of all, I start by maybe cutting down the cost of the refurbishment, uh, which the consultant had put it at 1.5 billion. But partnering with the KDF, uh, it came down to 250 million. So that was really a plus to the organization and basically even to the country at large. Uh, the ship has created employment. When the ship was at dock that time, the workforce had been scaled down to five employees. But when it was revived, uh, all those who had been retrenched were recalled and given contracts. I was promoted as a chief engineer in uh, 2002 up to 2011, towards the end of 2011, I was here as a chief engineer. So those, all those periods I was working on Uhur and uh, very much familiar with the machineries, 
and uh, the and the, the the aids these are other auxiliary machine we have main engines and auxiliary machinery so i'm very much conversant on it when i left the ship was parked at the dock and I stayed idle for almost eight years and last year i'm happy our president uh, intervened and uh, uh, brought a team of uh, navy officers here uh, of which they started working on the uh, reviving of marine of uh, marine and uh, after that in fact i was uh, approached to join them was because of my experience when i was joining here i found that the there was a team from the Kenya Navy that was already on board. It is uh, with their effort uh, that this vessel was uh, able to come back to operation after it had been in the dock for a couple of years. I can say I thank them because without them, they, I would not have been here because probably the vessel would still be you know, in the dry deck and all that. Everybody is happy with what MV Uhuru is doing. President Uhuru Kenyatta is uh, at this moment making his way to MV Uhuru, which has been loaded with uh, petroleum products ready for export to Jinja, Uganda, uh, through the Lake Victoria. The process of revamping MV Uhuru has been ongoing for a couple of months. Uh, courtesy of the Kenya Defense Forces, the Kenya Railway, the Kenya Maritime Authority, the Kenya Ports Authority, and uh, through the leadership of the Kenya Shipyards Limited, which will be undertaking in the next coming weeks the construction of a ship, and uh, it will be a first in this area, the port of Kisumu in 70 years. This development is geared towards utilizing this gateway to the East African community and with the revamped relationship between Kenya and Burundi, uh, there is some hope that uh, the output um, through this facility will start bearing the much needed revenue in the coming years. President Uhuru Kenyatta has underscored the need to involve the Kenya Defence Forces in the running of affairs, in the management of various departments. There is uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta uh, aboard the ceremonial Land Rover um, on his way to MV Uhuru, which will be flagged off by the President in a couple of minutes uh, yesterday the Kenya Shipyards Limited in conjunction with the Kenya Railway, the Kenya Maritime Authority and other agencies involved in this undertaking did load some tons of petroleum products onto MV Uhuru which will be flagged off by the President of the Republic of Kenya and the President of Burundi uh, His Excellency Everest in the Shimie this afternoon. The revamping of MV Uhuru uh, has been done at the coast, and um, we did see the chief of staff did uh, say that it was done at a cost of 50 million shillings and not uh, a billion shillings, which had earlier been estimated uh, by some quarters. The Kenya Defence Forces has been given the role of uh, leading development in various sectors, among them the Kenya Meat Commission, which the President said that with only 300 million shillings, the Kenya Defence Forces has been able to turn around this uh, 
department and uh, has been able to provide market for Kenyan farmers. And so this afternoon, the Kenya Shipyards Limited has been launched by the president and it is another undertaking by the Kenya Defense Forces which will also be used to turn around the fortunes of uh, this facility which has been lying idle for years. For 70 years there hasn't been any major construction going on in this uh, facility but in the coming weeks the Kenya Defense Forces through the Kenya Shipyards Limited will be constructing a ship. You did see the coin ceremony uh, which was uh, spearheaded by President Uhuru Kenyatta and his Burundi counterpart uh, signaling the beginning of that ambitious program which will put to work uh, various um, stakeholders and the youth there. Uh, the president being entertained um, just uh, a few meters away uh, from MV Uhuru, which will be flagged off. It is uh, stashed with uh, uh, tons of petroleum products ready for export um, using the Lake Victoria uh, gateway to the East African community. Uh, there also uh, we have seen former Prime Minister uh, Rael Odinga uh, who has been uh, playing an integral role in this particular process. Uh, they are accompanied by the governor for Kisumu County, Governor Peter. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for so. On your screen is MV Uhuru, which will be flagged off this afternoon or this evening by President Uhuru Kenyatta 
on it is a consignment of uh, petroleum products. What is happening right now is that uh, the production manager is taking the heads of state through the process involved in this uh, uh, particular engagement. Your Excellencies, in conjunction with MV Uhuru, we also had a tag that was being used then since 1901 to 1963, and this was the state of that tag, MP Vida. So we took this ship from these reeds or the hippogras uh, within our lake, and after the refit, this is what we had. If you remember, Your Excellency, this was the first boat that you made at so after clearing the pictures around the yard, we were able to access the
Your Excellency will now be introduced to the crew that made the refit. Good evening. If you're just tuning in, this uh, live pictures from uh, the port of Kisumu, uh, where the president is commissioning the Kenya Shipyards Limited. This is uh, an undertaking of the Kenyan government through the uh, Kenya Defence Forces, more specifically the Kenya Navy. Uh, the Kenya Shipyards Limited. Is a government-owned nascent shipbuilding and repair facility of its own kind in the region. Uh, it was born out of the need for a maritime facility that can handle bigger ship of the Kenya Navy, other ministries, departments and agencies, and later other maritime clients. It comprises two yards with the main aim And there the president is uh, uh, walking aboard MV Uhuru, uh, which he will flag off this evening. And um, as you can see on uh, the screen, just a little bit to the uh, right, uh, some consignment, uh, petroleum consignment, which will be exported um, out of this uh, port of Kisumu which has been uh, revamped uh, courtesy of huge investment by the Kenyan government uh, through the leadership of the Kenya Defense Forces and the Kenya Shipyard Limited, uh, which has been undertaking this exercise for uh, some months now. This uh, process has uh, provided employment opportunities for hundreds of uh, residents drawn from the region and in the next couple of weeks, we'll also provide employment opportunities for uh, thousands more. This is courtesy of a speech that was issued by President Uhuru Kenyatta uh, during the commissioning of the Kenya Shipyards Limited. The uh, country will be building uh, ships in the next coming months and this will be the first time the country does so in 70 years a monumental exercise that is for the development of the country but um, uh, the revamping is also coming as a huge relief to hundreds of Kenyans who depend on this facility for their upkeep, for their livelihood, and the president said that there will be no turning back in ensuring that uh, Kenyans are enfranchised and employment opportunities are created. He did praise the Kenya Defense Forces for their discipline in delivering on their key mandate and assignments, singling out the Kenya Meat Commission, which he did say has been greatly revamped by the Kenya Defense Forces. President Kenyatta did also indicate that previous administrations had uh, pumped resources into KMC, but all that investment did not bear any output. But ever since his administration invested heavily in the Kenya Defense Forces and handed the mandate of the Kenya Meat Commission, there has been a lot to see in terms of output. With a seed capital of 300 million shillings, the Kenya Defense Forces has been able to provide market for Kenyan farmers who for a number of years had been unable to sell their meat. And uh, that, he says, is an example that Kenyans can use to judge the input of the Kenya Defense Forces. The Kenya Shipyards Limited is also being spearheaded by the De Kenya Defense Forces and uh, it is mandated with building 
uh, a ship which they intend to undertake in the coming months and that the president says will be a great investment for the country the government assigned the kenya shipyards limited three projects which are ongoing both in kisumu and mombasa they include the upgrade of the kisumu yard which is currently underway it involves uh, dredging which is being undertaken by a contractor who is expected to finish the exercise in the next three months and uh, that dredging as well is currently underway at Mbita crossing point another project which was assigned to the Kenya shipyards limited is the construction of the second wagon ferry MV Uhuru 2 at Kisumu and the feet of KNS Shupavu. The construction of the second wagon ferry is expected to begin soon and we did see the coin ceremony which was uh, done by President Uhuru Kenyatta and his Burundian counterpart just to keep with the tradition of good fortunes for a ship that is being constructed. It is the initial stages of the construction of a ship and uh, in the coming months that particular construction will take shape. The construction of the wagon ferry will boost the transportation of goods and passengers within the Lake Victoria Basin and spur development in the Nyanza and western regions of Kenya. It will create employment opportunities for the youth as well as open up trade potential in the adjoining areas. Any moment now, we uh, will see some activity from MV Uhuru, which is heavily loaded with cargo. And that cargo is petroleum product. And it will make its way from the port of Kisumu into Lake Victoria and to the Kenyan neighbors. The revamping of this facility has been undertaken in partnership, but majorly played by the Kenya Defence Forces, the Kenya Maritime Authority, the Kenya Railway, and we are about to see the climax of it all. The shipbuilding process is also expected to begin in the coming weeks, and that as well will be another milestone for this facility which had been lying idle for the longest time. A lot has been invested in this. There has been some land reclamation which is currently being undertaken. And um, the last batch of the cargo is currently uh, being loaded onto MV Uhuru. Uh, the team had been uh, loading the cargo that is already inside the ship. And uh, uh, just to signal the seriousness of the process, uh, some of the shipment uh, was left behind. And uh, for ceremony purposes, they are now being loaded onto the ferry which will then set off on a voyage across the Kenyan borders into the East African community courtesy of this investment that the Kenyan government has been engaging in. It is uh, uh, an engagement that is expected to provide some much needed revenue uh, for the country as well as provide opportunities, employment opportunities, not only for the people of the region, but to Kenyans as a whole. So today, 
the Kenya Shipyard Limited is being formally commissioned uh, concurrently with the key laying ceremony for the construction of the second wagon ferry MV Uhuru 2 here in Kisumu. The key laying ceremony showcases the Kenya Shipyards Limited capabilities and the project is a, is a critical player in shipbuilding industry in Kenya which is ready to play its rightful role in achieving the government's big four agenda especially in the manufacturing sector. If you're just joining us, we are coming to you live. It is a special broadcast of the commissioning of the Kenya Shipyards Limited and a consignment, a shipment of petroleum products from the port of Kisumu is about to begin. The president will be flagging off MV Uhuru uh, from the port of Kisumu at uh, the Kenya Shipyards Limited and that will signal the climax of this revamping process which has been undertaken at a cost of 50 million shillings. The Chief of Staff of the Kenya Defense Forces, Ndubo Kibochi, did state that uh, it had been estimated that this revamping process would cost the taxpayer one billion shillings but that was revised down to 50 million and um, that is what it cost the country to get to where we are today and uh, we will When he addressed the gathering here and the country as a whole, uh, before he commissioned the Kenya Shipyards Limited, President Kenyatta did ask leaders to support the engagement of the Kenya Defense Forces in the management of various departments within government. The president uh, said that uh, the army has proven that it is trustworthy with the mandate it is given and uh, a lot is expected uh, from the commissioning of this shipyard limited the construction of uh, the wagon ferry MV Uhuru 2 will be undertaken by the Kenya Shipyards Limited, which is a branch of the Kenya Defense Forces, and it is expected to boost the country's exports sector. Kenya 
has been exporting a number of products over the years and mostly it has been done using the port of Mombasa and the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport but uh, with the commissioning of this facility uh, Kenya will be able to export more commodities using this facility. Currently the port of Kisumu exports edible oil, bar soaps, excise books, shoe shine, sweets and other confectionaries, sleeper shoes, netting material, blankets and fertilizer. The port's imports mainly comprise sugar, cotton seed cake, and bottled water and sodas. Kisumu Port is positioned at a strategic point. It is the gateway into Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, and Burundi, the catchment area of Lake Victoria, which encompasses those country, has a population of around 35 million and a GDP of some 30 billion US dollars. That is about 40% of the total East African community economy. Approximately 500,000 people live in Kisumu and 10 million people in the Kisumu region. This is Vihiga, Kakamega, Nandi, Kericho, Homa Bay, Migori, as well as Kisi, and as such, Kisumu is the third largest city in Kenya and a commercial center with diverse and uh, partly unexploited resources in agriculture, commercial, industrial tourism, and transport services. The port of Kisumu is one of the ports on Lake Victoria. the rail network played a key part on the transportation of cargo and passengers to and from the landlocked countries. Inland shipping on Lake Victoria formed uh, an important component of an intermodal supply chain along the central and northern corridor linking to Mombasa and Dar es Salaam points. By the mid-20th century, the East African Railways and Harbors Corporation operated regular sailings from Kisumu Port to Port Bell in Uganda and Mwanza in Tanzania using rail ferries that carried rail wagons loaded directly uh, from rail trucks in the three ports. Smaller ports like Jinja in Uganda, Musoma, Bukoba, and Kemondo Bay in Tanzania. Typical journey times uh, 13 hours between Port Bell in Uganda and Kisumu, and 19 hours between Port Bell and Mwanza in Tanzania. The port occupies 17.5 hectares of land with a staking area designed to accommodate a throughput. If you're just joining us, President Uhuru Kenyatta is flagging off the shipment 
of uh, petroleum product by MV Uhuru. It is the climax the Kenya Maritime Authority, the Kenya Railway, the Kenya Port Authority, as the and the Kenya Revenue Authority KRA. And the ship MV Uhuru is off on a voyage out of the port of Kisumu. It will transport the consignment tons of fuel out of the Republic of Kenya through Lake Victoria to other ports in the East African community, the countries that Kenya has been able to form long-lasting relations. And one of the countries is Burundi, whose president has been invited to be the guest of honor during the Madaraka Day celebrations, which will be marked tomorrow, the 1st of June, 2021 in Kisumu County. That's where we end matters this evening, where the president has commissioned the Kenya Shipyards Limited. My name is Edward Kabasa. On behalf of the team here, we do thank you very much for tuning in to KBC Channel 1. And as MV Uhuru sails into the sunset, I will hand you back to the broadcasting house for normal programming. Good evening. on KBC Channel 1. In respect to this event, the county government has been on the first lane in ensuring all the standards are met. Kisumu CBD and its environs are dotted with development projects that are being fast-tracked to finish before the big day. Intense construction activities and workmanship has been going on at the stadium to elevate it to state-of-the-art facility that the locals can be proud of. Oh, 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 oh